Hello and a warm welcome. It's Phil from uh, Level Up German. Uh, this is my name. It's down here. And I'm very happy to talk uh, with you about how to start learning German in 2021 this year. Um, let me get rid of this screen here because it's disturbing. I want to really focus on you today. Uh, this is really, really only a live stream today. We are not uh, working on uh, new uh, content for courses or so. It's, it's all about um, the idea, what do we need to do if uh, we want to start to learn a new language? How to start uh, learning language next year? Because we all know, we mostly have plans for the new year. 2020 was kind of... Well, it has good and bad sides, but we know it. we had our dilemma this year. And uh, now we may want to learn the new language next year. So how to do this, how to start learning German in 2021. And uh, I want you uh, to... Um, Uh, tell me if you want to learn the language in the next year from the first step on um, and uh, if you have any questions um, you can uh, talk about this so uh, also you can write it down in the comments and um, I will answer them here live and uh, give you some tips how to start with the German language. So if you if you have any questions uh, say it in the comments and also I wish uh, you of course um, Uh, very uh, nice days between the years. You say in German, zwischen den Jahren. I hope you had nice Christmas. And um, um, before we start in the new year, I hope you have a very relaxing time to think about your goals of 2021. So let's uh, start. And um, of course, if you say uh, who you are and who is watching in the comments, I really like that. So I know who I'm talking to. Uh, I have some a thumb up. Thank you for that. Um, so let's start uh, with my tips. You need to uh, follow to have a very good start learning the German language next year. Number one, actually, is yeah, it's it's a very easy one. I want everybody who learns a new language to speak from the first day on. Of course, in the, you, don't, you don't know a lot of words in the first day, but mostly um, you, everybody is in fear. I'm, I'm the same person, I'm, I'm in fear to make mistakes. Um, but if you learn a new language, it makes sense to just speak and make mistakes um, and then learn from them. Um, this is very important uh, when you start learning a new language. And you can learn um, the language and use the language active and passive. I said speaking, but it's actually not only speaking, it's just using the language. The active way is that you, for example, learn information in a course, you um, speak directly to somebody, you translate texts you um, reading, or you uh, learn in a grammar book. So this can be the active part of using the language. And then you can also uh, have a passive learning. Our brain loves to do passive learning. So we not only learn actively all the day, mostly our undercondition is learning with us. So what you can do is, for example, listen to German music or to podcasts or to radio, not with the idea to really understand every single word, This would be frustrating and we don't want to have this. No, but just to get used to the language. And there are situations where you think, whoa, whoa, I really understand what they say. And this is um, what we want to achieve. Um, the other thing what we want to achieve listening to uh, podcasts and radios also that our undercondition is realizing, oh, they saying one specific word over and over again, so this seems to be an important word. Uh, I may uh, listen to this more carefully. The same idea is also if you re-listen to audio vocabulary. 
um, if you um, have an uh, application learning vocabulary and this has an audio button or if you have a dictionary online with an audio button uh, it's also a good idea to listen to the audio vocabulary. Um, there are on some um, uh, vocabulary, vocabulary apps the possibility to uh, just play uh, the audio over and over again while you do stuff for example, uh, the dishes, or um, um, in, in the spring you want to clean your house, do this, but listen to uh, vocabulary in the background. It will help. Uh, and another passive uh, possibility to uh, use the language from the first day on is, of course, watching movies with subtitles. Also there, you have uh, different steps you can go through. First, you watch uh, a movie in your mother tongue with German subtitles. Then you switch to the German audio with subtitles in your mother tongue or in English. And then you, uh, 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 on, on uh, some point, get rid of the English subtitles and you have German subtitles to the German audio. And the last step would be that you get rid of the subtitles. Um, of course, this will not be from the first day on, but these are the steps you go through and it's getting easier and easier to just watch movies in German language. Okay, so this is the first thing. The uh, second point, the second tip I uh, would give you is do not force, but play. What I want to say with this is it's all about Staying in the flow. Um, flow, there is a scientific idea, is that uh, you have um, an action or fact of moving along in a steady continuous stream, the floating river, river for example, but in the science it's more that you are in a state of mind where it is not, it, it's not frustrating and it's not too slow, too boring for you. How can you stay in this state of mind? How, you ca how can you be in this state of mind? Um, actually, it's kind of easy. It's just don't do something too slow and don't hustle through the language. And if you do this, then you will be in the flow where you... And maybe, maybe on some point you, you uh, have a look and you see, oh, so many hours I'm learning already, wow and it made fun, okay? This is what we want to achieve. And um, we achieve this if we are not bored from the material we are learning and if it's not too overwhelming and frustrating because we don't understand it. So I don't say here that you can just jump over informations. It's very important if you start learning a new language and also if you're in the beginning and you want to really, really understand the language, that you start from level one, lecture one, and you have a look at this because you don't know if something will come what is important to you. So do everything. But if you say, oh, hmm, I understood this now, it was kind of easy for me, then go to the next point. If you say, whoa, okay, this is kind of hard, then take your time. And a mistake which is taken a lot is that a lot of students of, my, uh, of me, for example, want too much too early. Um, I'm the same kind of person. When I studied Japanese, uh, I did a huge mistake in the beginning. Um, I wanted to be able to talk about very hard stuff and um, I jumped over some grammar, I jumped over uh, some easy lectures in the beginning and I did not focus on them and then I just stumbled first and then I, I made the, the um, yeah, I, I realized oh I have to go all the way back. I have to go all the way back, learn all this again because I didn't focus in the beginning and this was really frustrating and it was really hard for me. So I don't want you to make the mistake and focus on every single point. Even if you say it's, it's easy, it's new information, it's not boring. So just do this and then 
in the next step you go to something more interesting for you. But the idea, and this is the whole idea, find this point where you say, oh, I'm in the flow, here it is fun for me. It's not boring and it's not too frustrating or it's not too overwhelming. Okay. Um, oh, let's not go to the next point on this. Um, I want to give you some tips how you can get there. Um, for example, um, if you want to have a focused um, mode, um, you can go somewhere on a place where you think it's cozy, you like it there, maybe not in front of your television and your uh, Nintendo or PlayStation, it's not a good idea, but um, if you go somewhere um, where you think, oh, I, I like it here, I like this place in my flat, uh, I like to sit here, it's cozy, and um, I, I may don't think about Facebook in the moment, I don't think about something else in the moment, I can really concentrate here, go there, but um, don't, um, it's also killing the flow, don't put away everything else, because if everything else is put away, your brain is like thinking, oh, uh, but there was a picture of this and this person, or um, um, there was something I really like to do in the evening or stuff like this. Just play it there, it's your flat, it's normal for your brain. Don't change anything, this would be disturbing. No, just go somewhere where it's comfy for you and uh, where you like to be, and it's easier to stay there for a longer time than on a very clean environment. Okay, point three. Find your learning type. If you um, learn a language, um, you need to learn every part of this language. So it's about reading, it's about listening, it's about hearing, it's about writing um, and uh, also communication. So you need to do everything in this uh, language. You have to learn a lot of words. Um, so there is no way to say, oh, this is my learning type and I will not learn this and that. But you can make it easier for you and your brain. Um, let's say you want to learn vocabulary and um, especially if you learn vocabulary, a very um, um, theoretical part of uh, the language, um, like grammar or so, you can find your way with your learning type to make it easier for your brain to understand. Let's have a look on the learning types first. What learning types do we have? Uh, we have those. So we have a visual uh, learning type, an auditory learning type, haptic, communicative and cognitive. Um, let's talk about every learning type for itself. So first it's the visual one. A visual one is the one who is uh, yeah, working with the eyes um, and um, you're watching this movie, uh, this video in the moment, this live stream, so I think you um, also have um, a visual learning type in your mixture of learning types, which is your individual learning type. So watching videos is something you can do to uh, have a better understanding of some information. So if you say, ah, I need somebody to explain something to me in videos, let's do this, let's uh, uh, um, watch movies uh, or videos. If you say, ah, I, I need this uh, to, to just learn new words, um, then watch uh, movies or um, there are also a lot of um, uh, videos uh, on YouTube which are just showing stuff and saying what it is in German. And what you also can do is using pictures while learning vocabulary. So have a picture on your vocabulary card or in your vocabulary app while you learn the word. Uh, I don't I don't have it with me in the moment, but uh, there are also a lot of books uh, with um, uh, pictures um, and uh, the uh, name of the object which is shown um, for learning German, for example. And if you have uh, a child, just steal those little, little books with all the pictures from them and they are also actually doing the same thing. Okay, next one is the auditory type. Listening. 
I'm, for example, um, an, an auditory type. I love to listen to podcasts, music, to um, um, documentaries, just in, in, in a radio format or so, just to learn new stuff. I really love this. And um, maybe you know my, my slow German podcast, or uh, there's also of a DW TV, there's also a slow uh, spoken um, podcast. Have a look in the podcast dictionary. Um, you can hear those um, uh, media to um, get used uh, to the German language. And you can also, um, we do um, um, hear um, exercises, just hearing them over and over again. Um, if you, um, for example, um, think I want to learn um, or better understand uh, and, and video on YouTube where somebody is explaining the um, um, a grammar, some grammar in, in German language. First you watch this uh, video and then you can, um, just while you do other stuff, listen to the video again. Just to remember the information. You already have the pictures in mind, you don't need them anymore, and you can just listen to them again. Also, um, what I said before, listen to the words you want to learn in your vocabulary app. Um, so uh, if you're a listening type, you're not an auditory type, um, just make it happen that you can click on a button and you can listen to the word you want to learn. Um, this will help you a lot. And uh, something I did was um, that uh, I am um, saving uh, audios uh, from uh, words I want to learn, put them on my MP3 player and uh, listen them in repeat uh, while I'm on my way. I have some pause after this and I can answer spokenly what is the word in my mother tongue. <coughs> Then we have the haptic one. Haptic one is very interesting. So working with your hands. Um, mostly um, what you can do is writing. Of course, you can write down a new word if you want to write a new word, or uh, you can uh, take something in your hand to learn this object word. For example, I have a cup here, and uh, cup in German is Tasse. So, um, I am having uh, this object in my hand and I'm, I'm a haptical t uh, type, so I have it in my hand. I have the feeling it's feeling cold because it's empty and old and um, sounds like this. Mm. And then I, I have the word Tasse in my mind. I think it says something Tasse which I can combine with um, the form or with the feeling. So something like this you can do if you want to really go dive into an object and, and really, really understand uh, or really have the feeling of the word you have in your hand, in the word, you can do this this way. Okay. Next one is the communicative type. You're a speaker. If you're a speaker, uh, you can uh, do um, different stuff. I think the first thing that we are thinking about is uh, go to a communicative course, a uh, communication course. You can do this, of course. Um, you can just ask around uh, in uh, here on Facebook, for example, for friends um, to uh, meet up and uh, talk to them. Um, maybe uh, one time the week or if you uh, learn together every day. But what is very important is to find a German mother tongue speaker and to talk with him or her uh, because you want to copy how they speak. So uh, meet up with Germans and um, um, find them. How to find them is, for, for example, with a Tandem. There is an app called Tandem app. Um, I may write it down later for you. You can find Germans who want maybe to speak your language and then you can talk with each other, switching the languages after one hour and uh, then you have a communication partner. One thing I love is uh, reading out loud texts and what I love the most is to play acting them. So, um, for example, now I have a book here. I have uh, 
Brazilian Portuguese in this case. And um, um, this is Asimil. Asimil, I really like them um, because they're working more with the feeling of a language. So if you if you like this, have also a look at this um, books. I also have uh, books for German learning. And uh, what they do is every lecture has um, a situation. Um, and uh, this situation you can uh, just read and learn step by step um, and, and try to, to, to play act it without, without watching. Um, and um, this is also how you can just use this communication skill you have for your own, with your own. Okay, this is the communicative part. Then uh, we have the cognitive one. Cognitive is more if you really want to understand the system of a language, if you really want to dive into the language and you really want to understand how is the language working. So more the, let's say, the mathematical part of a language, the system behind it. If you're um, learning... Um, more the systems behind something you can make up systems to make it easier to uh, understand new informations for example you can write down uh, overviews of grammar you learned new grammar and you can write down uh, what you learned uh, it's more for the haptic part too but also you can uh, visu visualize the system behind the grammar and how it works and what I really like is draw mind maps to remember new words um, so uh, if, you, if you say, I want to learn uh, Tasse, and uh, you write down the word Tasse uh, in the middle of uh, a uh, paper sheet, and then you can uh, say, okay, uh, maybe I go uh, I make a line from each um, letter, T-R-S-S-E. So for example, uh, what, what is my association to T? What is my association to R? And so on. And you can also um, just... Um, ha have associations or combinations uh, to these words. Uh, for example, what is the word in your language or what are you doing with this object? And making a system around it and building a network of informations because our brain loves to um, memorize uh, associations and combination of information more than just one single word. <coughs> oh, no water at the table. Point four uh, of my five tips I want to give you to start learning the language in the new year is the first content you should learn is easy words and sentences. Um, I said before I made the mistakes I wanted, wanted to go too quick in uh, Japanese studies, for example, and um, the same here. First, uh, try to speak about what you speak about in every uh, single um, uh, in every single conversation first. It's about yourself. It's, it's not egoistic. It's just if you meet somebody, you say who you are, right? So learn first to say who you are. What is your name? And then what is another question which should, which should come up? Where are you from? So those informations are important to learn first. This is what you're talking about in the situation before. Um, first, uh, what uh, is your mood, for example? How are you today? And uh, what are you doing for a living? So I think these are the most important topics you should be able to talk about in the beginning. And actually, these are also the easiest. So learn this first. And then you should be uh, interested in everything which is in your everyday life. So. Um, have a look around you and uh, what objects do you have next to you on your table? Or, um, what are you thinking a lot about um, in the day? Maybe you love to cook and you talk about eating and drinking or um, you have a hobby and you want to talk about this a lot. Then um, do this hobby or do the cooking and think about the words you see there and ask yourself, oh, what is the meaning of this in German? And as this is your interest field and this is something you do every, in, every day, this will stick better than every other information. <clears throat> okay. 
And last is make a plan and find a partner. We're talking about how to start learning the German language in the new year. But, you know, I'm a German teacher and I want you, of course, to stick with this. Not only start with this. Not only saying, okay, in January I want to do this and then on some point we know how we are working, how our brains are working, and on some point you find something else. But we don't want this. We want to stick with this. <clears throat> so it's very important that we are writing down our goals and we are finding a partner who we are working together with. Going this way alone will not help you. Um, who can be the partner? Actually, it's kind of easy. A partner can be the one you searched for doing tandem with. So uh, the one uh, who wants to learn your language and you can meet uh, on a uh, weekly basis or so and talk about your goals and what you want to achieve. It could be your mentor, coach, teacher, uh, which you are uh, talking uh, with in an um, basis of uh, every week or every day, depends on how deep you want to dive in the language. And uh, it could be everybody actually who is learning the same language. So if uh, somebody is also starting learning German, you can find them very easy here in the, in the groups in, on Facebook. Uh, you can uh, partner up and uh, say, hey, let's be a team here. Let's uh, say this is our goal and then we are meeting on a um, weekly basis, for example, and uh, talk with each other what we achieved. Yeah, what are you doing? Um, I uh, wrote it uh, uh, down here too, is please talk about your goals, what you want to achieve in the next weeks or months, and then make a step-by-step -step plan together. Stick with this plan and work together to make this happen. And then I'm pretty sure you are staying in the flow. Okay? So these are my tips for you if you want to start learning German next year with 2021. And um, if you are searching for a um, partner, I am, uh, I'm open-minded. So if you, if you write me, I have a look if we fit together, if we're a good, if we're a good team. Uh, and I offer you to uh, help you um, at least with uh, the step-by-step -step plan. So you know what to do, what are the, your next steps. So if you're uh, starting with the German language or you're in the very beginning of uh, learning the German language, please feel free to write me and I would be happy to help you. Thank you for this comment. Uh, it, uh, I hope it was very useful. I hope to help you all and um, I uh, hope to see you again in one of my next videos where it's uh, about uh, the next step learning German for you. Okay, this is everything from my side for today. Uh, thank you for being with me all the time. It was amazing that you uh, watched this uh, video until the end and uh, we will see you in the next days. See you, bye bye.